Or your pocket. Or you use it. Okay. Okay. Take it away. All right. So, uh, as he said, I'm going to talk about epilepsy in dogs today. It's one of the most common neurological disorders in dogs, so I think it corresponds really well to this week's uh, topic. So first I wanna go over the differences in terms between seizure versus epilepsy. So a seizure is just any kind of involuntary temporary disturbance in the brain, and normally that follows with some kind of uncontrollable muscle spasm. Uh, an easier way to put that is it's an abnormal surge of activity in the brain. And then epilepsy is when a dog has multiple seizures or they reoccur often and the guideline for that is more than two seizures uh, greater than 24 hours apart. And this is a chronic brain disorder, so it's a lifelong condition. And as I said, it's the most common uh, neurological disorder in dogs. So here I kind of just want to show more of a cartoon version of what happens in the brain. So in the top you can see here uh, just kind of more static or like stable activity. And then when a seizure is happening, there's abnormal bursts, the frequencies are different, neurons are misfiring. And then that can result in a partial seizure or generalized seizure. That refers to uh, what it includes in the brain. So a partial seizure only has one localized part of the brain that's a part of it. And then generalized, both hemispheres of the brain are involved in that abnormal activity. So here's a human brain, but it shows the corresponding EEGs. So that's a test that shows and tracks brainwave patterns. So here you can see the normal EEG at the top. And then the partial seizure, as I said, is more localized. So here that would be in the temporal lobe. And only part of the EEG has that kind of abnormal burst of activity in the brain. And then a generalized seizure, which involves both hemispheres of the brain, has the total EEG, all the brain wave patterns are out of whack. So there's various causes to epilepsy. Um, I'll go into each one further, but they can be idiopathic, structural, reactive, and then also environmental factors can play a role. So idiopathic epilepsy, as you know, idiopathic means unknown. So this is when your dog's vet will go through all other tests trying to determine a factor, but when they can't determine anything, it'll be idiopathic. So this is the most common diagnosis for dogs that have epilepsy just because it can be really hard to exactly pinpoint what causes it, but it can be a combination of genetic and environmental factors. So structural epilepsy is when the underlying cause can be linked to a dog's brain function, anything that happens in the brain that's abnormal. So that could be any kind of obstruction in the brain, maybe there's bleeding, uh, insufficient blood supply, there could be a tumor in the brain that could lead to this, as well as infection, developmental problems, and even some brain diseases can lead to it, as well as head trauma, which I'll touch on later, but the physical action of like something hitting the brain can lead to seizures. And then reactive epilepsy deals with more metabolic issues. So anything where there's too much or too little of a substance that's out of the normal range. So that could be low blood sugar or kidney or liver failure. And then any, there's also outside factors that can result in epilepsy. So there could be things inside and outside of your home that can result in seizures. So inside your home, you may have certain foods or cleaning products that have toxins that are harmful to your dogs. And then outside, there's insecticides, pesticides, different things that your dog can get a hold of and ingest that can lead to seizures, as well as uh, the physical head injury of something like bumping into them or falling on them could also result in seizures. So trying to look and diagnose when a dog is suffering from a seizure and in turn epilepsy, there's different things you can look for. So it's overall just kind of uncontrollable muscle movement. Um, so they can collapse or convulse to one side. Um, if their legs are in the air, they may be trying to do like some kind of swimming motion. It's called paddling. Um, as well as just uncontrollable shaking 
or on the other extreme, they could stiffen, and that can also be some kind of indicator of a seizure happening. And then another key indicator to look for is their mouth. So they can be excessively drooling, foaming, uh, they'll be making unusual sounds than normal. If this is your own dog, you know what to look for. And then their teeth may be chomping down or chewing. They could be like biting themselves. And then also some owners report that they know when their dog's about to have a seizure just kind of by the look in their eye. So you may be wondering what it's like for the dog when this is happening. Uh, seizures in general aren't painful when it's happening, but afterwards they could feel confused or panic. So personally for me, I don't really have a dog that has uh, epilepsy, but my aunt has seizures. And how she's described it to me is, it's kind of uh, just a black spot in her memory when it happens. And if nobody else is around to tell her that she just had one, she would still know that she had a seizure just by how she feels differently afterwards. But the really important thing is to make sure you clear the area when you see that your dog's having a seizure because they have those uncontrollable muscle movements. They could roll into something, bump into something, something could fall off on the table and hurt them, so that's where the real danger comes from. And also, uh, don't stick your hand in a dog's mouth, because some people think that dogs can swallow their tongue when they're having a seizure. That's not the case. If you do that, you'll just end up uh, getting yourself hurt, because they'll probably bite on your hand. So since it's a chronic lifelong condition, uh, there's different ways to treat kind of the effects of it, but there's no necessarily cure for epilepsy. So the main one is anticonvulsant medication. Um, this just works to help decrease the spread of seizure in the brain. Um, and once you start giving an anticonvulsant, it's recommended that you start and keep giving it for life because if you stop it, which you can, it would probably result in having worse seizures afterwards. And then watching a dog's diet is important too. Um, your vet may recommend nutritional sub supplements, but they will also probably try to keep your dog's source of nutrition constant so that they can monitor blood levels, see how they're responding to medication just so that stays the same, and also make sure that's not causing any kind of seizures or triggers. One of the most uh, common anticonvulsant medications is phenobarbital. And as I said, this kind of works by decreasing and stabilizing the neuron activity in the brain. So mainly this one decreases the neurotransmitter glutamate. And since that increases nerve stimulation and you want to stop that in the brain because that's what's causing the seizure, this makes sense to decrease that. But since it decreases that neurotransmitter, it can also decrease others which leads to the side effects of lethargy, loss of coordination, and increased appetite and thirst. And then there are also just some other easier ways to help your dog if they have epilepsy. The first one is kind of a bummer just because I know dogs like to swim, but uh, if you can avoid the pool if possible, that would be good because if they suffer from epilepsy, you never really truly know when a seizure could happen. So if they're swimming, they have a seizure, they could drown. So it's just a way to keep them safer, but it's a little uh, not super fun to do that. And then also in the summer and then just in general, if you know your dog's having a seizure, it's important to keep them cool because they could overheat when they're having a seizure. So maybe bring some kind of fan out or after they have the seizure, like put some water on the pads of their paws to cool them down. And then it's important to monitor how many seizures they have and like how far apart, but also how long the seizure happens. So the rule of thumb is if they have a seizure that's over five minutes long, that's when you wanna notify your vet because at that point, it starts to get really dangerous with how it's affecting the brain and depriving oxygen to that. But overall, epilepsy is not a debilitating condition in dogs, and there's definitely ways to monitor it and control it, and your dog can still live a happy life.